Our next caller is Harry from Australia. Harry, what's going on, man? Hello, how's it going? Good, good. good. How yeah. can we help you? Awesome. So um, I just had a question regarding uh, like my one rep max calculations on the uh, powerlifting program. So I recently bought the uh, the strength and powerlifting programs. And I got to the, you know, there's like an intro section, there's a strength portion, and then there's the peaking portion. And I was in the intro portion and I was doing the, you know, at the end of the three weeks, you take your eight rep uh, max on the last set of the exercise. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I was heading towards that point where I got it and I put my eight rep max in. And the numbers that were coming up for my one rep max were quite low below what I knew my one rep max was. So like uh, squats, for instance, I think my one rep max came up at like 80 something kilos. And I, I just recently done, oh, you guys are in pounds. Also, it's like times 2.2 .2 or we, something. We can do math. But, that's all right. <laughs> okay, cool. cool, cool. Um, it's so it's like 80 something kilos, but I know I'd, I'd done like a few weeks earlier. I'd done like 100 kilos for or 220 pounds for, for five. Um, so I knew I was in a little bit of a, like I peaked when I'd done that. So it was maybe a bit lower, but I was basically wondering, do I need to sort of manually adjust those calculations to reflect what my run, one rep max actually is, or yeah, this, should I just trust the process and just maybe like not exhaust my central nervous system and, and, uh, do something closer to what well, the, the Harry, program is reflecting. Harry, both both options are are possible. Okay, so mm -hmm. first of all, this is this is one of the greatest challenges of of creating digital programs for millions of people is that there's always going to be this individual variance, and uh, when you use you know calculators that are built on the internet to hopefully work for most people it's not always going to work for everybody especially eight reps too which is something we yeah. agreed for it was more you know towards the beginners that were introducing them towards power lifting so there's some other calculators that might be a little more accurate in terms of you know coming up with your one that's right max. and to justin's point the, the and the reason why we went with this type of a calculator was for that we knew that we were going to attract people that have never power lifted before and we'd always mm -hmm. rather them focus more on form and technique and maybe a little bit lighter towards their, their one rep max then we're here we are talking to someone like you who's a little bit more uh, advanced understands it is so you, one yes you could totally adjust it up because you know your one rep max better than the obviously the average person getting introduced to this program and then there's the other option of actually just following it to a t all the way through and seeing what the potential benefits are because one, yeah. of, one of the things I've seen with some of my powerlifting friends that have gone through our routine is that they too run into the same thing. Oh, I could do more. And I've told them like, you know, just follow it all the way through and tell me what ends up happening at the end. And sometimes what ends up happening is they actually end up surpassing some of their previous best because maybe what their body actually needed was to not be pushing that right. hard all the time. Yeah. And, Focusing and, on practicing and like mastering the technique of it. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. so yeah. either option's okay, you know? Yeah, that's great advice. Um, I would agree 100%. You know, one rep max calculators are almost always off for someone like me. Uh, I... I lift way more in the low rep ranges than the calculations will give me, and I'm less in the high rep uh, calculations that they'll give me. I have really good low grinding strength and really, kind of, I guess, poor in comparison, higher rep uh, type strength. So these yeah. are very – Which seems to happen to me more in like, in like the posterior chain and – like glute dominant movements, I yeah. seem to be able to do much higher weight in the low rep ranges, whereas like my bench press reflects a little bit yeah, uh, closer. It, they're, it's general, mm. it's rough estimates. So, you know, you could you can adjust them for your specific body. But, you know, Adam gave great advice. Like sometimes, mm. I remember I did this once where I, I read this routine. It was an old Soviet style workout uh, philosophy where you pick the weight that let's say was, you know, you, you could do 10 reps with that was 90% intensity. And then for like two months, you always only ever do 10 reps, even though as I, I obviously got stronger and it felt like it was 80% and then 70% and then 60%, I always mm -hmm. did 10 reps. Then at the end of two months, I went and tested my strength and I got stronger than I would have had I always tried to push 90%. In fact, if you've been working out for a while, 
and you're relatively advanced, I think you should go in that route. I think you should go in the route of less, mm. less is more. And then at the end of the program, test your strength and see where you're at. I think you might be surprised mm-hmm. at just uh, how strong you've gotten. I can always run the program again too. Like, That's right. like what's losing, I'm not losing 12 weeks of my life. Right. The other thing I was thinking <laughs> is, you know, because I did, like, I've missed the time a little bit, but I wanted to peak in this program to do like a jujitsu competition. And I'm thinking if I'm like completely frying myself every workout and going to what my like true one rep max is, then yeah, that's, am I just going to overtrain and not be able to do as much to- as the other things I like to do? Yeah, you know? that's that, totally, that was another thought. Yeah, totally different answer now. So uh, yeah, even more reason yeah, to, to what, back off. What rank are you in jujitsu? Uh, purple. Oh, you're a purple belt. Well, you should know better. You should know that m- max strength is probably not the most beneficial for jujitsu. I mean, for jujitsu, no. I would do. Uh, you know, I would do like a maps performance uh, type of routine. That's mm. going to make you. That's going to give you much better performance. I mean, you're going to get uh, good performance from powerlift too, especially as a mm-hmm. purple belt. You're probably training at least three or four days a week, so you're able to integrate you're it. Strengthen your end range of motion. But yeah, I would go. I would do like a maps performance for jujitsu, especially if you're going to compete. Right. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're going to do a competition because you know you know mm-hmm. as well you know, mm-hmm. you know better than anybody. But I mean, you've probably been training for at least three or four years if, if you're at a at a purple belt level. Um, you know, strength is important, but how, but if that strength can't be applied in different directions with different tensions mm-hmm. and lots mm-hmm. of mobility, it's not very useful in jujitsu. So I yeah, would do, especially I, if it's like, if, especially if it's, uh, like gnawing into your training time oh, or, yeah, or, yeah. or energy, of you know, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I guess the reason I, I picked the, the power lift program was because, well, firstly, like simplicity, because I'm using like a, I don't know what sort of gyms you guys have there, but like a really commercial gym that has pretty basic equipment. I don't have any like balls to throw yeah, and yeah. that sort of stuff. Well, Matt- so I just like, I just thought I'd keep it like really simple deadlift squats. And, and I've definitely noticed it has like improved my game because I used to just do like a lot of yoga and calisthenics and that definitely helped, but just adding some oh, yeah. powerlifting movements in yeah, it, to a certain degree has, has definitely any, helped. Any, look at you, comparing yoga to any strength training, you're gonna mm. see you're gonna see better uh, results with strength training. I would love I would love to see him do suspension training. Dude. Suspension or maps with, performance. And here's yeah. the deal: maps performance. Right, okay. You could do maps performance with basic equipment. It's not. It doesn't require lots of weird equipment. So I'll send that to you if you don't have it. If you're going to yeah, compete, awesome. if you're going to compete in a tournament, do that. But also modify it. If you're doing jujitsu four days a week, I wouldn't do more than one or two days a week of uh, of strength training. I wouldn't do any more than that because right, okay. then you'll be doing uh, too much. So we'll send that over to you. And also, I appreciate you calling it. I know you're calling from down under, and it's like what is it three a.m. Yeah, yeah. three a.m. over there. So we yeah, appreciate yeah, it was you. All good. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Th- <laughs> thanks for calling, man. Pleasure. Thank you. No problem. All right. Yeah, that you know, good question, but he threw in the jujitsu at the end. Yeah, and it that changed, just makes the whole conversation. Yeah, it changed everything. It's like yeah. if you're going to compete in jujitsu, and he's like, I, I, well, I noticed an improvement, and it's like, well, yeah, you were comparing it to yoga. Yeah. <laughs> well, even of course, even our suggestion with performance is uh, is a bit much for someone who's doing jujitsu four he's, days a week. You have to cut it back. Yeah. You just have to cut it back, right? I yeah. mean, I mean, what two days a week maybe of performance max? Then? Yeah, max. I would even that's do why, one day a that's week. That's why I, the suspension trainer. I just feel like because it's uh, it it promotes the the deep range of motion and I, and stability and and you're still going to get strength from it and it's not as taxing mm-hmm. as like a, a barbell type of a mm-hmm. program. I feel like would really complement uh, his jujitsu. It'd be really interesting to see how he how he did with that. Yeah, totally.